the United States has long been seen as the pinnacle of the cattle industry and of horsemanship. This is largely a product of the cattle drives and the Spanish influence in Western horsemanship. So that's what we're going to be talking about in this video. Without further ado, let's jump in. I got to thinking, is the United States really at the pinnacle of the cattle industry and stockmanship today? Or is those just days of the past? And I started thinking about this for a few weeks. And what really spurred my interest in this question was I was looking at Russian and Brazilian cattle markets. And more specifically, their style of horsemanship. And I just got to thinking that question, does the United States hold the monopoly on the cattle industry that it did? So let's break this down. The United States never had a worldwide monopoly on the cattle industry. However, the United States had the most amount of people that wanted to eat beef, which created a cattle market unseen in the, in the world, the whole world. And this caused the United States cattle industry to become the biggest. And it also caused a lot of people to get into cowboy stuff and become cattlemen. It created an entire industry. But when I watched these videos about Russia and Brazil, it got me thinking that the United States is being challenged for that, that position. For example, Russia is starting to create massive, massive branches and feedlot operations that rival the size of the United States. They're doing this through oligarchical, aristocratic type Putin stuff that basically puts the power of the ranches in the hands of a few people and it's subsidized by the Russian government. The Russians are also bringing in American stockmen, cattlemen, cowboys. Uh, they're even doing rodeos, believe it or not. They're bringing those people in from the United States to Russia to teach them how to be like the United States. Now, the United States obviously is a free country, so these people are free to do what they want. However, Russia has the potential to surpass the United States cattle industry because Russia borders Europe and China. They can export their cattle to the European Union countries. They can export their cattle even to India and China. India and China being the two countries with the most population on the planet, which goes to show that there is a market for Russian beef, especially since rising population will require more people to eat beef. Now, obviously, India does, does not eat beef like that, but there is specific provinces within India that will eat beef. Now, China passing a billion people, and if Russia can produce beef fast enough and cheap enough, China will be a willing and lucky buyer, considering Russia and China don't necessarily like the United States. But what about Brazil? Brazil already imports beef, or they export beef, to the United States. Meaning that the United States cattle industry is already being flooded with Brazilian beef. This is causing a whole mess of disputes that cattlemen are talking about within the United States. And if you... Want to know more about that? You can go look at Lonesome Land's video. Now, more specifically, Brazil and Russia challenging the United States cattle industry, I don't necessarily see it because of a few reasons. First off, the United States, they like to eat homegrown beef. You go to your local Walmart, you go to Costco, wherever, you see something that says USDA, Black Angus certified, Wagyu certified, 
made in the USA certified. You see those things on your packages and most people immediately jump on it because they think the United States has the best standards for beef in the entire world, which to a degree is true. So people like American beef for now. I think once things might go a little bit south, people will be a little less picky with the beef that they eat. Now, Russia will never be able to export enough beef to the Americas to make it worthwhile, but they can grow to the same size, if not bigger, than the U.S. cattle industry, which would then mean that the U.S. cattle industry is no longer the pinnacle of the cattle industry. It would be Russia. Now, this doesn't have many worldly consequences for the United States because to a degree Russia can go do their own thing just like the United States has been doing over here but if Brazil were to take the pinnacle spot from the United States that's bad news for U.S. cattle markets for one if Brazil were to assume that position they would begin to, they would have the ability to undercut U.S. cattlemen anytime they wanted. Meaning, if you are a U.S. cattleman and you want to sell, just for random, like simplicity's sake, you sell a cow for $100 and the Brazilian cattleman is able to sell that same cow for $90 in U.S. markets because they have the pinnacle spot, then that Brazilian would be able to do it people in the United States, maybe they even see Brazil as the better meat choice, they go with the Brazilian meat, which would then cause the U.S. cattlemen to lower their prices, Brazilians to lower theirs, and down and down and down, till eventually, this is of course simplified, you have the death of an industry because nobody can afford to actually produce beef and survive. This is why the United States needs to keep their pinnacle spot. But when it comes to horsemanship, Brazil and Russia still bring in American cowboys and cattlemen, meaning that the United States has the best stockmanship because nobody is going to import people from a country who has less experience than them. Nobody wants people who don't know what they're doing. This is why Russia and Brazil, of course, import Americans to their cattle industries. So I think just by nature, the fact that the United States has people who are being recruited to go to the rising industries just goes to show that the United States still has the best practices and best economics for the cattle industry. How the United States got here is a topic for another video. I hope you all enjoyed this video. Hope, hopefully it was inf informative. Blah, sorry, I can't talk. Make sure you like and subscribe. Have a great day.